Today, I'm going to be ranking the top 10 shotguns in Fortnite Save the World. This is all based on standard defense missions. Most of my experience is in the 164 players, so I'm playing at the highest level of the game with these shotguns totally maxed out. This is also a list based on my own experience. Anybody can make a top 10 shotguns list, and we're all going to get different lists, but I've got thousands of hours in this game, tons of experience. I've got videos on every single one of these shotguns, and many of them will be linked down below, so check that out if you guys ever want to learn more. And I also want to say that I did this with a lot of math using our own calculations, and I've also referenced a few spreadsheets that I will link down below because I really wanted to get a complete picture. And funny enough, this list actually mirrors very closely to the shotgun tier list that I made a very long time ago. So if you've seen that, you might know what we're in for. So that list actually includes the woofer being barely edged out of the top 10. So this is kind of an honorable mention because it's basically a weaker Pulsar 9000, but the woofer is great for crowd clearing. It's great for decent damage to a single target. If you run totally rocking out, this is true for anything, but if you run totally rocking out, it can crit pretty hard. It can do a ton of damage and it can be really good for crowd clearing and single targets. That's kind of where the weapon falls off and becomes kind of just a weaker Pulsar 9000, which is our number 10 slot. I know I caught a lot of flack in my tier list video where I didn't put this in S tier. And honestly, I just want to say I'm not sorry. I believe in it. The Pulsar 9000 does pretty not great damage to single targets. It can't really go through shielders at all. It is better at Riot Huskies than I knew in that tier list video. And I don't mean to keep referencing the tier list. I'm just saying I caught a lot of flack for it. And the Pulsar 9000 is really great at crowd clearing. If you don't have a Riot Husky or a Shielder, it will kill a lot of enemies all at once. It'll go through all of them, costing four energy cells per shot. You can shoot a lot before you have to reload, and it has really good perk options, but it's locked to energy, and all around, it's a pretty mediocre shotgun when you consider the whole picture. Everybody who defends this weapon tells me about crowd clearing, and they ignore the fact that Smashers and Miss Monsters exist, and you're going to have to deal with them somehow. I actually made a whole video on the Pulsar 9000. I'll link it down below where I basically defended this more thoroughly, but that's essentially the gist of it. With that being said, let's move on to a better crowd clearing weapon in the number nine slot, and that's the Maverick. The Maverick I love as a base game shotgun. It is available in missions almost every day. You can get it from regular llamas. It's super, super strong. And because of its accessibility, you probably have a copy of this unleveled up. If you just run standard perks on this, you will have a decent time. It's not insanely hard hitting. It's not the best shotgun in the game, but it will go straight through shielders, which I love. You're still going to have trouble with Riot Huskies, but other than those two, it'll do good damage to everything around it, including smashers. When I was running this in my double crit damage video, yes, double crit damage plus totally rocking out is a lot of buffs to give a weapon. It was still critting for like a million damage. So it was sitting down power level 250 smashers in five hits, which is nothing groundbreaking, but pretty good for a base game shotgun. One that I think actually does the Mavericks job better is our number eight position. That's the big shot. The big shot is one of the art deco weapons with these fancy six perks where they do 44% more damage to elemental targets. That does mean that it kind of suffers versus physical targets but they're all going to die anyway. The big shot is not exactly what you'd want to be using versus a big single target, like I've been saying, but similarly to the other three shotguns we've mentioned, its crowd clearing is nearly unparalleled. It just does tons of damage to lots of things all at once, and I would recommend pairing the big shot with a harder hitting shotgun as a secondary. You can run the same loadout for two weapons. You'll be clearing crowds very comfortably and then sitting down smashers with something like the double boiler. We'll get to that later on, though. What I want to talk about before that is the number seven position, and that is the Tiger Jaw. Tiger Jaw is like married to the room sweeper. I feel like these two weapons are opposites, but equals kind of. The Tiger Jaw is a slow firing, pretty hard hitting shotgun with a magazine. I like to run mag size because I have Chaos Agent in support very often, but you can absolutely run this with a reload perk. It has decent range, decent single target damage, and because of Affliction, you can just sort of hit each single enemy one at a time and just let Affliction do the damage while you move on to the next target. It's a pretty solid weapon that's also base game. You will see this in regular missions available on a near daily basis. I have a daily video series where I talk about the missions every single day, so if you ever looking out for this weapon, stay tuned for that series because I'll be showing it off because it's a really great weapon that you don't want to miss. And similarly to that is the Room Sweeper. So the Room Sweeper shoots faster than the Tiger Jaw, does less single target damage than the Tiger Jaw, but it does a lot more overall damage. That's why I'm ranking it higher here today because it is just stronger. Your range is limited, so you need to be very up close and personal to take advantage of that, but I have a whole video showcasing how to use it efficiently. Link to that down below. There are a lot of shotgun shells in that thumbnail because this weapon is a bullet hose. You will be paying for that damage. It's not the cheapest option, but again, with Affliction, you can just sweep. Hey, yeah, you can just sweep across the room of enemies and you'll be triggering Affliction on every single one of them. And if you need to focus fire on a single smasher, you'll see from that video why my weapon is perked so weird. Fire rate, crit damage. If you're running totally rocking out Buckshot Raptor in the lead and you make this work, it 
actually shred smashers. It does really good single target damage. It's pretty excellent crowd clearing. You are paying for that damage with shotgun shells, but it'll do the job and it'll do it well. Now, the next weapon on the list really calls into light why a top 10 list is not a guide video. I have done tons of videos covering the best shotguns, the best shotguns again. I've made a shotgun tier list where I discussed everything thoroughly, and I've made tons of videos on all these weapons, as I've previously mentioned. And the Browbeater is a niche that's important enough to bring it up to the number five slot. The Browbeater is not a crowd clearer, but it is one of the hardest hitting shotguns in the game. So for that purpose, I think it should rank highly because it's just a smasher, missed monster killer, and if you're going up against the mini boss, it's not a bad pick. Now, what is the hardest hitting shotgun in the game? As mentioned previously, well paired with the Browbeater for crowd clearing is the Double Boiler. The Double Boiler is, as mentioned, a very hard hitting shotgun, but because it reloads so fast and it shoots two shots before reloading, you can actually output some really good single target damage. Its perks are pretty nice. It gives you a nice option, but that Steam Cloud actually gives it really good crowd clearing. If you eliminate just a single enemy in a choke point, like a ramp coming up a hill or a trap tunnel, which most of us should be using, that Steam Cloud will do millions of damage to everything that walks through it for an extended period of time, and that is really nice. In fact, if you're going up against a Smasher or a Miss Monster, I don't know if we're going to have gameplay to show this because it's kind of weird to set it up, but if you have basic enemies near those bigger targets, you could shoot the smaller enemy, activate the Steam Cloud, get some extra damage versus the big target, aim for the head because it'll do a lot more damage. You need to run Toy Rock now with this, even with the base 15% chance to crit, bringing you up to a 43%, you are going to want to make sure that you're crit because when you do, you will be sitting down everything. Between the high single target damage, the DPS, and the Steam Cloud, the Double Boiler is one of my favorite shotguns in the game. I know it's only number four, but it is insanely strong. Do not let that deter you. Again, that's why this isn't so much a guide video, because when you rank weapons, it, it, it implies that one weapon is universally better than the other, and it's, it's just not. I think this weapon plus the number eight slot Big Shot is a great combo. They're both amazing at what they do. I just think the Double Boiler is a little bit more useful overall, and that's all that the number four spot means. Now, number three, two, and one are all three of the most popular shotguns in the game. This is going to surprise nobody. I've said this many, many times that the Pop Shot, Ground Pounder, and Husk Buster all have almost identical DPS. The only thing that varies is their fire rate, single target damage, and reload speed, which is kind of everything. So I think the number three position fairly goes to the Pop Shot. Now, my perks on here are a little weird, but it's because of how shotguns work. So magazine size actually works exactly like a reload perk because the way that shotguns reload is based on the shells that they have in the magazine. So this is nine shells reloaded over 2.3 seconds, which means you are reloading on a per shell basis. And the bigger the mag size, the faster you'll reload. And it's actually how it works. So when you run this weapon with magazine reload and a crit build, this isn't like the exact optimal way to run it, but I've, I like this happy medium. You'll be shooting this semi-auto shotgun at a really good pace while reloading insanely fast. It's super fun, super silly, and unironically very, very strong. I made a whole video on that link down below. If you guys want to see this thing used in a couple of different variations. Very, very fun, very versatile shotgun and having affliction, as mentioned, never, ever hurts. Now, the number two and number one position are impossible to talk about without spoiling the final answer. And this is where I am coming to a decision. If you guys have been following the channel for a long time, you're not going to be surprised. I've been saying this for a while. I believe the Husk Buster is the best shotgun in the game. Now, it is close. Do not get deterred. Like I said earlier with the double boiler and the big shot, the ground pounder and the Husk Buster should really be used together. They're both amazing. Let's start with the ground pounder in the number two slot. This is a high fire rate semi-auto shotgun that does pretty amazing single target damage. If you crit, you're going to take out most fatties and nurses in one shot. You're going to take out normal enemies in one or two shots, even without critting. And you'll be shooting so fast that you can sit down a smasher real quick. If you use Chaos Agent to reload with a frag grenade, you will increase your total damage output over an extended period of time by 80%. It is that important to run Chaos Agent and Mag Size. As mentioned, Magazine Size will improve your reload speed just like a reload perk will. So having more shells on hand is more important. Like I said, 12 rounds from a ground pounder is going to kill pretty much any smasher in sight unless you're super unlucky with crits and it'll one shot blasters and takers it is amazingly strong however that high fire rate low single target damage means you will be reloading more often so yes chaos agent can help with that and yes the reload speed is not even too bad even without chaos agent i'm serious the ground pounder eliminates mini bosses really really well just as a normal weapon even if you're not using a loadout but the husk buster the husk buster shoots a little bit slower has two more rounds in the mag and hits a lot harder the husk buster is the best smasher mini boss killer 
in the game, in my opinion. Now, the pot shot has a really weird thing going on. The math is very difficult to do in a calculator with the sheet because it lies to you. In game, the pot shot is it's the best weapon for mini bosses of the game, but the Huskbuster is right behind it and it's a lot more economic, which is why I still choose to use it regardless. The Huskbuster with its slow fire rate and big damage makes very good use of your ammo. It is also a scavenger weapon, which makes it super cheap to craft. That is why if you see the timestamps on this, it is paired alongside the Stampede. The Stampede is another shotgun in the game. It is identical to the Huskbuster in every single way besides, I think, impact and cost. Because it's a scavenger weapon, you can see that it's cheaper overall just to make it. It is more ammo efficient, so you should just always use the Huskbuster over the Stampede. If you're a lower level player just using what you got, don't worry about it. It's not that serious. Later on, put your investment into the Huskbuster because it's just better. It is a nice big damage weapon where you will not be reloading very often. And when you do have to reload, as mentioned, Chaos Agent will take care of you. Just throw a grenade or shockwave. Or this is my beast's guide to optimal shotgun usage. If you're going up against a mini boss, just drain the mag. Drain the mag, kill it as, as fast as you can and then activate a war cry with buckshot raptor until you're rocking out now you are fully reloaded with a war cry buffing you and your teammates empty the mag again throw a frag grenade empty the mag again and if the mini boss is still alive by this point then you're either soloing it or you're going against a smoke screen or trap vulnerable mini boss smoke screen will reduce your damage by 75 percent i'm locking that number in because i tested it today 75 percent of your damage is lost versus a smoke screen mini boss you should always be using a melee in that position i recommend the ravage Ravager. Smoke screen mini bosses never have an element. So a physical crit rating, double crit damage, attack speed Ravager is your friend. Uh, the Spectral Blade is a great second place. Stabs with a third is a third if you want to just have something to work with it. That's how you kill smoke screen mini bosses. Trap vulnerable, use traps, okay? But any other mini boss should be dead by that point because the Husbuster is that strong. So yeah, I recommend pairing the Husbuster and the Ground Pounder for optimal use, but double crit damage Ground Pounder is insanely strong. It clocked in at over 3 million DPS. So just because a second place does not mean it's a slouch so uh there you go the top 10 shotguns in fortnite save the world did you agree did you disagree leave a comment down below this is a very thoroughly vetted list i did not craft this quickly i put a lot of math into this and i really stand by these picks like i said it even mirrored my tier list which made me very happy to see seems i'm pretty consistent with my picks and i'm locking this one in so uh if you like the video be sure to subscribe stay tuned for more i'll see you guys in the next one and uh thanks for watching <laughs> Do 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 do